On today's episode of the St. Louis Pain Expert Podcast, I'm going to be talking with Elizabeth Donati about self-advocacy, both in terms of financial health, physical health, and how you can become your own health detective. Elizabeth has developed a new root cause tracker app that she's going to tell us a little bit about that will allow you to find the root causes of your own health problems so you can get back to the happy, healthy life that you want. I think you're really going to enjoy today's episode. And if you do, make sure to subscribe to our podcast so you get notified of future episodes. And now, on to the show. You're listening to the St. Louis Pain Expert Podcast with Dr. Dave Candy, St. Louis's leading expert in chronic pain relief. Dr. Candy specializes in helping women age 40 and above to overcome chronic, nagging aches and pains without medication, injections, or surgery so they can stay active, mobile, healthy, and independent. Whether you're suffering from pain yourself or know someone who is, pain's a universal experience that affects us all, but that doesn't mean you have to suffer. Knowledge is power, and having the right information can help you or someone you love get on the road to recovery. On the St. Louis Pain Expert podcast, Dr. Candy talks with other pain experts from around the world to give you the information you need to recover, the peace of mind of knowing that you're not alone, and the hope that lasting relief from chronic pain is possible, and it doesn't require relying on pills, injections, or surgery in order to do so. So sit back, relax, and open your ears, mind, and heart, and let the healing begin. Welcome to the St. Louis Pain Expert Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Dave Candy. I have with me here today, Elizabeth Donati, who is an advocate of self-advocacy, and she's going to be sharing with us her story, how she ventured from the love of health and fitness and nutrition into the world of financial health, and then due to circumstances of life, back into the holistic health. And she's actually developed a new app that will help with self-advocacy called Root Trout root cause tracker app. And I'll let her uh, kind of fill you in a little bit more about exactly what that is. But uh, welcome, Elizabeth. Thank you for joining us today. Wow. Well, I'm blessed and grateful to be here. So can you tell me just a little bit about your journey? I know before we started recording, you shared it a little bit with me and it's just a great story. So I think this would help give people some background and then we'll delve into you know, holistic health and financial health and all the various things that you're an expert in. Well, um, yeah, I'll try. Um, God, it's like, where do I begin? Um, I, I guess basically my background is is healthy only because I grew up on two farms. So I grew up in, I was born on a farm in Michigan and then finished finished being grown, I guess, in a, or, or a farm on, in Oregon. And very, very early on when I was 15, I read this book, much to my mother's dismay, called uh, Diet for a Small Planet. For those of you that know it, it's really about vegetarianism and going back to your roots and, you know, just eating from the land and stop killing animals and, you know, the basic stuff. And I really took that to heart at that age. You know, you're very impressionable at, at, when you're 15 and 16 and 17 years old. And I, I never let that down. And I had a when I went off to college when I was 18-ish, I had a brief bout of bulimia and uh, it went away very quickly when I was about a year later when I got pregnant with my son. <clears throat> so that was, I was grateful, but really, really launched me more into understanding what makes people tick, understanding what makes people do things, understanding what makes people eat things or not eat things or all kinds of stuff like that. And so my my love of fitness came, it was really fun. I was telling you, I walked into a gym my first year of college at Oregon State University in Corvallis, Oregon. And here were all these guys and these women. It was actually quite a few women there. And they were lifting weights and sweating and they were just like riding the bike and doing, you know, at that point there weren't all the different cardio machines that they have today. And I was in love. I just absolutely was in love and I knew what I wanted to study. And I have never stopped. I was 19, 18 or 19 at that point. And I did that for a long time. I did personal training in Oregon. I had the very first personal training. Like nobody even knew what it was. It didn't even have a name. And I found the name. It, it, it's out of, some, out of California. I found it was like personal training. Oh, wow. Well, that would be fun, right? So I did that. I ran health clubs in Oregon. And I just... I don't know. I was just in heaven. It wasn't work for me. It was like, I got to go play with people and help them feel better. And 
I did personal training differently is the same way I do money um, coaching and stuff today is that I, so many people, they would go to a personal trainer and they, they want a personal trainer to babysit them for like years, right? I, I don't know if you've ever worked with a trainer, but most trainers want you to work with them for years because it becomes easy for them. But I didn't want that. I used to tell my people, if you're not done with me in three months, I've not done my job because my job was to educate them, to train them, to do what they needed. And if they wanted to check back in with me, you know, after three or four months or whatever, that was fine. But so that went on and I did that till I was about, I don't know, 31, 32 years old. And, and I was married to, I actually had gotten divorced and remarried to a gentleman that was much older than I am. And I uh, was living in Santa Barbara at the time. And my son was back in Oregon with his, his um, dad. My one and only regret leaving my son. Don't ever do that. <laughs> We're still very close, but it was probably my one and only regret. And I um, was married to this guy who didn't understand money. He made a lot of money, but he didn't understand it. And I didn't understand it. And I remember um, calling, calling my mom one time. We had gotten ourselves out of a lot of debt, uh, business debt. It wasn't like, you know, for coats and going on vacation debt. It was hardcore, you know, debt. So we got ourselves out of the debt and I remember saying, okay, so we've been applying $3,000 a month, right? To all of this debt, we've got it paid off. Now, what do we do with this excess money? And he said, I don't know. And I remember, remember very naive at this point, I'm 62 now and I was 32, 33, something at that point, 34 even. And he's, I said to him, I said, well, you're the guy, aren't you supposed to know about money? And of course, I, I, now that I understand belief systems and all of that about money and everything, I remember calling my mom and I said, so why is it I know how to do everything on a farm, right? I can butcher chickens, I can raise corn, I can <laughs> fertilize, I can do all of this stuff, fix plumbing, but I don't have a clue. And I remember she just didn't have anything to say. She was silent. And finally, she said, I couldn't teach you something I didn't know. And I was just blown away. And um, it, there's a there's a saying uh, there's a there's a term called reticular activation. Are you do you know what that means? Familiar, yeah. Yeah. So basically, what it, reticular? I always make a joke, and it's about it being your reticular is activated. But basically, what it says is when you become aware of something, you become acutely aware of it, and you see it every everywhere. Like David, if you went and got a yellow Corvette right? You never saw them before. As soon as you started driving that yellow Corvette around, you'd see them everywhere, right? And so I, I realized that when I was pregnant, like every woman I knew was pregnant. But as soon as I wasn't pregnant anymore, I never saw pregnant women again, right? So it was whatever you're acutely aware of. So in terms of the, the money and not knowing, the, let's call it the financial education of humanity, I started looking around and everybody I talked to, they, they were talking about money in some particular way. I didn't have enough. Things were expensive. I got into debt. I bought something I shouldn't have bought. I lost money. It was everywhere. It was like hitting me in the face. And then one day, um, I don't know, 2001-ish, there was a letter to the editor from a dear, sweet curmudgeon, <laughs> that retired an attorney. And he wrote an op-ed piece in you know, a letter to the editor and basically said, look, he said, if, if everybody did what they're with their money, what they should be doing with their money, they could afford to buy a house in Santa Barbara. They could afford to do anything that they wanted. And then he ended that letter with it. And I just want to know with, um, I just want to know when in America we're going to start teaching kids about money. And I don't know if you've ever been hit with an idea or hit with a purpose of, hit with something I can't explain it it's happened a couple times and I stood up because I was in the office and I was reading it and um, I said well why doesn't somebody just teach a money camp for kids where they can come and learn anyway well you know what happens when you say that to the universe it says well you do it <laughs> so so a year later I held my first money camp for kids we did later change the name to Camp Millionaire um and, uh, but I'm going to bring back the money, the money camp name. And that was in 2002 and I've never stopped. I just, I never stopped doing it. I have programs for kids, programs for teens. 
Um, COVID was really tough because I basically lost most of my income because it's camp curriculums and camp programs. And of course, nobody's doing that right now, but I'm hoping next year that I can go back and do my summer camp in Santa Barbara and people go back to putting kids together, which is what they're supposed to be doing. But um, that's a whole other subject <laughs> that we can talk about. <clears throat> so juxtaposition that so so there's the money piece right and i still do it today i'm still revamping my website i'm still working on a an online program for a group in china i, I still do that not full time but i still do that it's still a passion if you talk to me or called me about financial education i am i am lit right i know how to do it i know how not to do it um it just infuriates me that we don't teach children what they need to know to be successful adults and i just mean to be able to have relationships to be able to understand money to be able to understand sex to be able to be a parent to, to know what to eat right drives me nuts that we don't teach kids what they need to know but let's go back to 2006 i got a bladder infection and took a bout of cipro now, i don't know if you guys know about cipro but you should never take it i will just put a plug there please 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 don't ever take cipro for anything and two weeks after I did, my feet started hurting. And keep in mind, I am fabulously healthy. I did, I just, I am an all in moderation girl. So I was never sick, even to this day, I've never had the flu. 62 years old, I've never had the flu. Occasionally get a little sniffle. And so two weeks after I took this Cipro, my feet started to hurt. And my back started to hurt when I touched things. And it was like, it was like my skin was on fire. I don't know if you've, if you've got clients that ever experienced that. It's like, yeah. No. yeah it's actually uh, not as uncommon of a description as you'd think. Yeah. So it took me three months. I went to like, I don't know, three or four or five doctors. And, and I said, this is the, this is the Cipro. This is the antibiotic. I mean, I could put two and two together, right? It was really, there was, a, that was the only change. Oh, no, it couldn't be the antibiotic. I said, but it was. I went to a foot doctor. Or I went to a neurologist and I went to somebody else. Well, at that time, you know, information on the web was, was already really prolific. And I just started putting all the symptoms together and just trying to search and search and search. And I was just hungry for like, what the hell is going on with me, right? Something, I've got to figure this out. The doctors weren't going to help. And even then I had a distrust for doctors. So I discovered the term peripheral neuropathy, right? And then I'm like, oh my gosh, that's the symptom. That is what we can, I can now, I know I had a label for what I was experiencing, right? But still nobody could tell me what was going on or how to fix it. I remember there's a international or a national neuropathy association in the United States. And I remember finding them and going, oh, cool, maybe they have some answers. Well, the gal, I called the gal and she, she basically told me there was no cure. And I said, well, you don't want to know what I said to her. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't very nice. And I hung up because I'm not a girl to take no for an answer. I don't believe that the body can't heal. My underlying massive core belief is that you give, give the body the right tools and the right thoughts, <laughs> right? And it, it knows how to heal this, these beautiful containers we experience life in. They want to balance. They want to have homeostasis. They want to function and feel good. They don't, so to me, every, everything is a clue. Everything is a little hint, right? Um, a little wake up call. So finally, after I found peripheral neuro neuropathy, I put in peripheral neuropathy and Cipro, and I, Dave, I will never forget this day. I will never, it brings tears to my eyes. I'm looking at my computer, like I'm looking at you and my screen lights up like a Christmas tree. Article after article, after blog, after um, the, not forums, but you know, the news groups or, you know, stuff. And, and I got it like, oh my God, I knew it. I sat there in tears knowing that I had known all along and it wasn't just me. There were tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people that were experiencing the same thing I was in different stages and different intensities and variations. 
I was so pissed. I was beyond livid at the fact that this one drug could change my body so dramatically that I now went from being completely functional and purposeful and driven and feeling good to miserable and in pain and <laughs> just pissed, right? So that's kind of what led me on. Keep in mind, I'm still doing the fitness thing, right? So, I mean, I mean the financial thing. So I'm still doing the financial thing. There are a couple of years I taught in slippers because it was the only thing I could put on my feet. <laughs> I actually have a... I actually have a product called the money game that I market. And the day that we did the, the teacher training or like part of the how to videos for the website, I had to wear slippers because I couldn't put anything on my feet because it hurt so badly. And I actually have a little note um, in the first part of the video that says, this is why Elizabeth is wearing slippers in the training. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you know, to, to, to finish the story, how I got to the app, while I'm still doing the financial stuff, because it really turns me on, is that I, every doctor, as I told, was telling you, every doctor kept saying, well, track it, right? Try to find, write down what you're doing. And I was, I was not using hormones at the same time, menopausal hormone, you know, bioidentical hormones, which I still am. And write down, if you're on your progesterone, da, 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 eat this, write, down, write it down, write down your symptoms, or write down when the neuropathy is the worst. And um, by the way, this, at this time I did, I had already found hyperbaric oxygen chamber, which is like a godsend. But I started to put pieces and pieces and pieces together and no way, I looked for apps, I looked for journals, I tried to make my own Excel sheets and file maker sheets and nothing worked. And so three years ago, I just told my boyfriend, I said, I'm just going to just do my own thing here. And it wasn't supposed to cost very much and it wasn't supposed to take very much time, but it took two years to develop the app because we just kept changing it. And finally, I have a tool for me that now millions of people can use. And it, it's so much fun to use and it's so easy to use. And I am still, as I still told you, I'm still finding little things that trip my body up. You know, because I tied the Cipro to Epstein Barr, and uh, it basically, I believe, and I only know what what I think I know. So I I always preface that I I can't tell you that I know anything. I can I only know what I think I know, um, and I think what Cipro does is enlivens and reactivates the Epstein Barr virus, and when it does that, that raises hell in the body, neuro <laughs> neurologically, so as you probably already know. Yeah. And, you know, as you're going through your story, that that burning sensation that you were talking about, it, it's a very common s symptom of not just, you know, peripheral neuropathy, but any type of nerve pain. And once pain has gone on for a long time and become chronic, a lot of times it is a lot more involved in the nervous system. And when that happens, there are a lot of factors that get involved. I mean, like you said, you, your thoughts affect it. What you eat affects it. What you do with your body from a physical standpoint affects it. The medications you're taking affect it. Um, and there are so many causes that it, it can be kind of overwhelming. Um, not to mention the fact that when doctors or organizations even tell you, sorry, you're just going to have to live with it. No. But you know somewhere deep inside that you're not crazy and it's not all in your head that you know, there is actually some hope out there and you just have to be the one to go advocate for yourself and, and yeah, find it. You really do. You know, I, um, I am not a religious person. Um, I, you know, if, if I had to go fill out a dating site thing, I, I would have to click spiritual but not religious, you know, <laughs> one of those things if you've ever been on a dating site. But I fell in love with the medical medium stuff. So I don't know where you are with Anthony Williams stuff. I've but heard I of to, it. Oh, my God. I, I have to tell you, I, I know that you're, you're a doctor, but not but. And I would encourage you to read his stuff. I have done his, I did his, his um, 369 cleanse twice now in the last month and a half. And I feel so much better. Because his his belief is that it's all pathogens and um, pathogens and toxins and like I was saying uh, heavy metals and molds and uh, all of this stuff and just getting all this crap out of your body and even though I eat so clean 
just there's all kinds of residual stuff in there and I know I'm going to do the cleanse probably four or five times over the next year and it's not that hard to do because it's not a fast it's really not a fast and it's um, it's amazing and I trust his information spirit given way more than I trust most doctors information at this point because it just makes more sense to me like I said I am not religious I don't know that God spoke to him I, I don't know I do know that I feel better having done his, his cleanses. Then. So. That's the ultimate result. And how you yeah. end up getting there. If it works for you, you know, uh, if you know I, I eat this certain way and I feel better, you know, whether it's pathogen driven, whether it's divinely inspired, you, know, you feel better when you do this thing. And that's something that you can put in your control. Just do it. Yeah. Doctor, doctor, it hurts when I do that. Well, stop doing that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I always love that little joke. <laughs> People do things that know that it was like, how bad when I used to do, um, I don't do nutrition coaching or fitness coaching at all. Now I set a great example for people, but I don't, I'm not interested in babysitting anymore, but you know, people would say, Oh my God, I did this. And I know it causes me a stomach ache. Well, why is it that you want to feel bad? <laughs> what, what inside of you is making you want to feel bad? If you know that makes you feel bad when you do that or eat that or think that, why are you doing it? You know? And there are all kinds of you know, reasons behind that. You know, yeah, whether, okay. you know, obviously, there's some type of benefit that you're getting from it that currently outweighs the, the pain that it's experience, or causing you to experience. But, you know, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, you don't want that pain. And it's when when the balance starts tipping in the favor of, Hey, I want to feel better. And so, yeah, I like eating this particular food or yeah, I enjoy smoking cigarettes, but doing that habit anymore is no longer worth it to me. And that's really right. when. Have you ever, yeah. Have you ever heard the saying people, um, people don't change until the pain of change is less than the pain of staying the same. Uh, something similar. Yeah. 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 I love that because it's so appropriate. You know, human beings are very intricate intricate beings is all I can say. Fascinating. So kind of going back to your financial journey, um, mm -hmm. you, know, you grew up on a farm and learned pretty much everything, all the physical labor that it would quote unquote be termed maybe man's work in a generation, but never learned the concepts of money. And I've met with so many you know, widows who have lost their husbands and just been perplexed because they were kind of in the same boat that you know, they'd always just kind of relied on their husbands to yeah. you know, take care of the bills, the finances. And that may be the first time in their adult lives when they've ever had to deal with that. But very, that's a very common story. It, it's painful. I have done most of my coaching with women. Um, believe it or not, more younger women than, than older women, but a few, a few older women. Um, I have heard those stories mostly through my financial advising partners. You know, I've got three people that I send when, the, when, when I do, when I do coaching, which I don't do a lot anymore, I do some, but when I do coaching, I, I do the basics. So I do the financial education part. I teach about budgets. I teach about the beliefs. I teach about a, a process called the money jars, which actually came from T. Harbecker and Peak Potentials. And I'm sure he took it from somebody else. Um, so I teach the basics. And then when people are ready and I instill some habits, so I teach habits. I'm a really big proponent of just basic habits. Um, and then once I get them to a spot, then I feed them to one of my three financial advisors um, or somebody else, or if they, maybe they don't need it. Um, but that's generally how I work with them. So I hear those stories, but you are so right. There's too many people that have that either have their head in the sand because they don't want to know, or they, it's so, I mean, money is confusing. You know, I, even after all of the education that I know, I mean, I know how to buy stocks and bonds. I know how to buy real estate. I know how to do, I know how to do all that. Right. But there's so many bloody options. There's so many ways to invest and in my camps i'm not a stock market girl i we teach the kids um do you understand what i mean when i i say we don't teach mechanics we teach principles we teach yeah so we teach the why we don't teach the how if we get a question about how do we do such and such then i will go into that 
but the, for the most part, we teach the why because I think if you can instill a why in somebody, they'll figure out the how on their own, whatever works for them. So we press with the kids really, really, really strongly the idea of developing cash flow streams by investing in assets that build cash flow and build passive income streams. Um, internet in automated in, in internet sites, um, businesses that produce, right? Um, not necessarily going, I'm not much of a, an accumulation girl and more of a utilization girl. Does that make sense? I mean, I know it's really important that of every dollar we make, we need to take a percentage of that and we need to invest it, right? In something. But I'm also a bigger proponent of utilizing my time and energy, just like I'm building a program right now. It's probably going to take me six months to a year to create it. But once it's done, it will generate money for me for decades, right? That's what I love to do. And I make a distinction in my financial camps about the difference between earning money and making money. If you're trading, most people don't understand this, but when you, when you teach a kid or, or an adult the difference between making money and earning money, my, my definition, it's like a whole world opens up for them. They, they never had, you know, you know how somebody introduces you to a new way of thinking and then all of a sudden you go, oh, why, right? So my first journey into the financial education was Rich Dad, Poor Dad with Robert Kiyosaki. I'm sure you know that book. That was, that was kind of after that letter to the editor, that book took, that was the inspiration. Um, but I really love inspiring people to look at the way they're making their money or earning their money. If you go to, a, if you go to Walmart and you get a job and you're getting $12 an hour and you only get paid once for that hour, right? You, you don't ever get paid again. However, if I take that same hour and create something that I can sell over and over and over and over and over and over again, I just created a way to get paid a zillion times maybe for that same hour that I worked. That's making money as opposed to earning money. But it's that whole delayed gratification thing that if you ask a you know, two-year-old, I'll give you one piece of candy today or two pieces of candy tomorrow, which do you prefer? It's that forgoing the instant gratification of, hey, I can get this one piece of candy now or this $12 an hour now, or I can get nothing now, but knowing that that nothing now will result in something more later and being able to you know, kind of just you know, see the yeah. future benefit of it, which I think is not obvious to people. Right. So when you explain that and open that whole Hope open that whole window to that world. That's when you start seeing the true entrepreneurs. And I believe most kids, I really, really, based on what I've seen in my camps. Now, granted, I've only seen, I mean, I've seen hundreds and hundreds of kids come through my camps. But kids are so entrepreneurial. They're so full of ideas that, you know, they haven't been squashed. And I always tell the kids, and I'm sure the parents and the teachers hate this, but I always tell, because I teach at a very interactive, lots of questions, lots of movement, and um, all the lessons are interactive. Like they're, they're learning things because they're doing money. They're running around, they're paying bills, they're having debates. You know, we're not, this is not a lecture workshop, lecture in a, in a workbook workshop. This is a playful camp. Um, but it's fun because I, I always tell, tell the kids, you know, Go ask your teacher why you're learning this. And sometimes I'll come back and say, I did. <laughs> or I ask my parent why. I, I'm a big proponent in teaching the kids that constantly ask why. We need more Americans, especially right now, they're asking why. Why? You know, this, this question of why is critical. You know, I, I took a seminar one time, and I took a lot of seminars between 2004 and 2000. Oh, I don't know, probably 10, maybe probably $40,000 worth of personal growth seminars and money seminars. And all. It, was, it was a wonderful education. And I remember um, one of the little activities, you know, the saying, I think, therefore I am. He, he made us come up with a different word. We couldn't use the word think, right? We had to use something else. And mine immediately, I always have it, I question, therefore I am because I question everything. I don't believe things right off the bat. I don't, I'm, I'm not cynical. 
uh, but I definitely question everything. I want to know why. And then I want to know what's under the why. And then I want to know what's under that why. And that kind of spirals into, uh, I imagine how the, the journey down the root cause tracker app came about. And I, I think a lot of, like you were saying, kids at that age, they're, they still have an open mind. They haven't been told that this is the way we do it. This is the way we've always done it. This is the only way it can be done. And right. by the time we become to be adults, we're kind of structured in that belief system that this is how this is done. This is how that is done. This is how this is done. And there are no alternatives outside of that. And that's not to say there's, they're all wrong, but to continually question and say, why is this the way? Is this still the best way in 2020 as a, as a pair compared to 1960? Yeah. Um, and you know, just being able to continually do things, like you said, for the reason behind them and not just because these are the steps we've always taken. Yeah, I have definitely gotten some backlash over the decades from parents who think that I told their kids that they shouldn't go to college. But what I really say is you need to understand that college is a way, not the way, and here's why. So, but if you take a 10 year old that doesn't quite hear that right and you know plays that back to their parents, I have taken some backlash, but I don't back down. I never back down. I never apologize. I never, I just, I am, I just speak my mind and I tell the parent, this is what I said and this is what I, why, why I said it and I stand by it. So if you believe that your child, the only way for them to, to be successful is to go to school and get good grades and go to college and get good grades and get a good paying job. So they're unhappy and stable for the rest of your life. I said, you go ahead and have that belief, but I would like your child to have a different belief. Yeah. And nothing wrong with going to college, nothing wrong with nothing not going wrong. to college, but you know, understand the reason why you're doing it. Right. And know that there's a zillion ways and you don't have to go get one job. I mean, what is it? The last statistic, I have a hard time saying that word, statistic, um, is that most adults have at least seven full-time careers. Which is vastly different than it used to be. You go to school, you get a job, and you stay at that company until you retire. Right. That doesn't happen anymore. You know, our world our world is completely, I mean, we have such an interesting world now. I mean, we, you can call it dangerous, you can call it toxic, you can call it I don't know. I just find it interesting. It's just, I have to look at it as a play. I have to look at it as a play that I'm a piece of and you're a piece of. And um, I, every kid that I, that I get to influence is a, is a piece of it. It's a, we're all just players in this big old, big old play. You know, it's just how you play the game. How are you going to play it? How are you going to do it? How are you going to act it out? It's, it's a fascinating opportunity to wake up in the morning you know and I don't know how old you are but it's 62 I don't feel old <laughs> I look in the mirror and go okay there's a little gray hair and there's some wrinkles on my face but I don't, I don't feel 62 at all um and I but I'm starting to understand my mother's ability to look back and see how things got to a place and have have a different, I have a different, a different perspective on looking at the whole world when you're older is different than when you're looking at the world um, when you're 30. It's a, it's just a different place to be. And until you're older, I, I had no concept. I mean, I have this incredible desire to be a grandma right now. And I have a grand horse. <laughs> I don't have any grandkids, nor have I ever pushed my son, nor would I ever. Um, but at this point, I'm like, can I just rent a grandchild, right? <laughs> I think it really needs to be a rent a grandchild, a grandchild website so you can rent them. But anyway. Well, you know, kind of going back to your root tracker cause app now, um, if there's someone out there who's got some complex you know, health issue that they're looking to solve, or, you know, maybe they're not getting quite the satisfaction out of life that you know, they would like, can you tell them a little bit about what all is involved in the root tracker app and how that kind of helps people dial into the 
root causes behind whatever's going on in their life to start to make the little changes that you mentioned. Oh my God. Yeah. I would love to actually, because it's like been my driving force the last two couple of years. So basically with the app, when you downloaded it, when you download it, it gives you all these different categories. And basically think of categories as aspects of your life, right? How much time you spend in front of the computer? How much fruit you eat? How how many hormones? Are you taking hormones? Uh, Your EMF exposure, your who you are around, your sleep, your water, you, you literally, the cool part is that I made the app so that they can track anything. Now, when they sign up, they, they get some emails from me that basically guide them because a lot of people will want to, they'll want to track 18 categories, right? But, but that would, you'd spend all day looking at your phone, right? And I don't sit with my phone. I don't even actually know where it is. Um, I'm not a phone carrier. So you, you check and I always, so I guide them, look, Let's for three or four weeks, let's just track your hormones. Let if you're a woman in menopause, let's just track your intake of of vegetables. Let's just in or all food. So then let's let's track your sleep. Then let's track, right? So pick three or four maximum categories, i.e. aspects of your life to track. Now, just like if I went to my cupboard and I wanted to make chocolate chip cookies, but I didn't have any flour, chocolate chips sugar, blah, blah, I couldn't make chocolate chips, right? The app is designed, right? So now you're tracking these aspects. And the cool part is now you can, now you're going to track your symptoms, right? So you're kind of tracking them at a time, but it also, you can, we're working on being able to track it for an entire day. So I don't know, you know, from working with enough, enough clients that every day is different. When you've got pain, like there's days I wake up and I'm in no pain. I have no neuropathy whatsoever. And that can go on for two or three, four weeks. And then all of a sudden I wake up and I'm in a different body. It's like, well, where, how did I get in this body? I wake up and something is different. I don't know what's different. So you're tracking your items, whatever categories you want to track. You're tracking your symptoms. And literally the app is fully customizable. You can add categories. You can add items in the categories. You tell, you just click it by this, there's a little heart, not a heart. You heart the categories you want to want to um, track. That's one of the cool parts is that it's literally, there was no app on the market that was fully customizable. But this one is. You can track what you want and not track what you don't want. The key is, back to the cookie analogy, is that unless you use the app, it cannot do connections. It's got to have the data. So you have to have a commitment that I'm going to track these areas of these symptoms or all the symptoms for a month. You know, you've got to, you've got to put some data in the system. Once you get enough data in the system, you click track. And if there's connections, it's based on a really simple um, algorithm um, that's designed to see overlap. And if like, if you, every time you ate a banana, you got a headache, right? It would say banana, right? Because you would, you basically tell it to track a symptom because it's trying back to that root, excuse me, back to the root cause. It's trying to find that, like, where's the connection? What what are you consistently doing every time you hit a headache? What were the consistencies? See what I'm saying? Some <clears throat> sort of mathematical algorithm that 50% of it is due to eating pana- bananas and 25% is due to not sleeping right or something right. like that. So you, yeah, so you've got to put the data in. Um, it is, even if you never, however, even if you never put in enough data for the app to actually do what it's supposed to do, what I find from using it personally, and I use it pretty regularly, is that the simple act of my putting it in the system is making me so aware of what I'm doing, what I'm eating, where I'm going, um, what exercises I'm doing, whatever I'm tracking makes me so aware that I find the connection, right? Which is why I said, I love calling it, um, it makes you become your own health detective because you're finally not relying on a doctor you realize that you're going to go stand in front of a window or I mean in a mirror and the person in front of the mirror is, is the one that's going to figure it out. Okay. And that the app helps you put those connections together, whether you put enough data in to see and let the app do the algorithm or 
more than likely you're going to find patterns that you're doing simply because you're you're finding going wow i'm doing that and every time i do that i do that and then you can actually look back right you can actually physically look back it's got a calendar so you can go back and see everything that you inputted and all of your symptoms on the same thing now one of the I, I, we made it so that like let's say i'm your patient and you and you say okay so take this app and track your water intake for three weeks, right? I'm just picking something simple. And I do, and you go, okay, so we're gonna have a telecall. You probably do a lot of telemedicine now. So yeah, <laughs> like that, just like this. Um, heaven forbid we see real people again. I, I kind of miss them. Um, but you, you could, you'll, I would go into the app and I would say from this date to that date, I'm on a swapper chair, by the way, that, it's really cool in case you sit all the time. Um, and I'm a girl, so I tangent. Um, so you click, I'm going to, for that last three weeks, I want to just, I just want to you just print out what I did, right? Symptoms. It generates a report in the app. And then it says, well, who, which doctor do you want to email it to you to? And so then I click you and then it emails you my report. That's pretty neat. So now you can look at it and it's really simple. It's not complicated. It's just, I mean, you have to do a little figuring out, but yeah, because now I don't have to keep a journal and you don't have to ask me 16 questions about, well, it's right there in black and white. I just kept track and here you go. Look at it. Well, that's, that's great. Um, and you know, the other thing that you were mentioning is even if you never get enough data in there for the system to use it, what I've noticed in the past when I've had people just, Track your diet for your week. Write down every sing- thing you eat. Don't change anything. Just track you know, what you eat and write it down each time you eat. Just that mindfulness and the awareness of it that, hey, if I eat that donut, I'm going to have to write that down. And I don't want to have to write that down, so I'm not going to eat that donut in the first place. <laughs> oh, it's so true. And it works, it works for the financial coaching, too. Because anybody that works that works with me has to keep a money journal for seven full days. Everything, every dollar that came into them, their lives and every penny that went out, they have to keep track. And I'll never forget, I was working with one of my doctors, actually. And she said, okay, I'll do it. And a week later, we had our second appointment. I said, so what did you learn? She goes, oh, my God, I spend way too much money going out to eat. Right? She just had never added it up. And when she did, she says, I'm stopping. I can't do this anymore. So yeah, there's the awareness of just making yourself, I mean, the power of journaling is profound. No, I don't care how you do it. There's no right, wrong. Just start writing stuff down for a while. Take Your life should be worth it. Your peace of mind, your health, your calmness should be worth taking a few days and paying attention to what the heck you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Awareness of the problem is, it seems like always the first step to, to fixing it. Um, So if someone listening to this would be interested in either downloading your app, um, how would they get a hold of that app? Or if they need either financial coaching or one-on-one coaching, with you, how would someone be able to get a hold of you? Oh, um, well, in terms of the app, it's available both for I, um, iPhone and Android. So basically just type in root cause tracker. Those three three individual words are not together. So root cause tracker. You can also go to rootcausetracker.com and read a little bit more about it. See a little, see, see a lot more pictures, you know, kind of get a feel for it. Um, and in terms of the fi- financial oh by the way i wanted to add with with the root cause tracker i'm not some um unknown person i make it very clear on the app and on my website how to contact me so i don't care whether i send i sell a hundred apps or i sell a million copies of the app if you want to talk to me and ask me a question about it you can pick up the phone my phone number's right there so i make myself always available to when i create a product I'm always available. I don't step out of the picture. Um, in terms of the financial camps and things like that, if people go to campbillionaire.com, they'll find the games and the, the books and the, you know, the curriculums and, um, and that'll lead them to coaching too. So. And so the, the camp millionaire is more focused towards children versus yeah. the coaching would be more focused towards adults. Yeah. I have done quite a few older teens though. 
getting ready, parents have hired me to work with their older teens, like 17 and 18. They're about to go to college and they know those kids that don't have a clue. And they're actually mm -hmm. really fun. My favorite, I mean, I love teaching the little kids. I, I, there's just something in my heart that I didn't want a bunch of kids, but I love, I love teaching them um, and watching their eyes light up and their brains just get infused with great ideas and things like that. Um, but my very, very favorite age to teach is 18 to 22-ish because those kids realize they didn't learn anything. And they <laughs> are hungry. Please teach me. I, I just don't feel so lost. Please teach me, you know. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to share your information with us. You know, if there are one or two closing thoughts that you would give to people just about advocacy or anything that you've mentioned today, um, what are some tips that you'd give to someone listening to this podcast right now? Um, never give up because there's always an answer. Never, ever, ever, ever get, give up. And in, in addition to that, giving up, always listen to your gut. If you start going into a doctor's office or you start doing something in your, I call it a niggle, you know, something niggling at you. If you get that niggle, you better listen because that's your inner being, inner spirit, inner voice, inner tuition, whatever you want to call it, saying, hello, hello, I'm out here. You need to be listening to me because in my personal experience, every time I don't listen to that, I mess up. And every time, every time I do listen to it, I'm like right on. So I never give up and always listen to that inner voice because you know way more. I know way more about my body than you do. But, but I, I don't, and don't place, don't hand anybody your power. Not anybody, not your spouse, not your doctor, not your guru, not anybody. Don't hand anyone your power. And I think the last thing is that I tell people, stop making stuff mean stuff it doesn't. God, you know, when you get an emotional hit on something, I know so much physical stuff is mental, so much, if not maybe all of it. When you have an emotional upset, I don't care. Anything that takes you out of peace, anything that takes you out of calm, you have to sit, step back, and you have to ask yourself, what am I thinking? What am I making something mean that it doesn't mean? And women are way worse than that than men, but men are definitely guilty of that. Just stop making things mean things that make you miserable. You know, choose peace. Take a deep breath. And just be here. You know, that classic be here now. Write some stuff down. Take some time to pay attention. You know, all kinds of little things. So never give up. Don't give up your power and choose happiness. <laughs> choose peace. <laughs> just choose it. Wake up in the morning and choose it. Yeah, and if it's not there, figure out why it's not there. Do yourself a favor and everybody around you, figure out how to find your way to peace. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today, Elizabeth. And You're welcome. Uh, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Awesome. Well, it was a great start. So I appreciate that. You have a great day too. Likewise. Okay. Thanks for listening to the St. Louis Pain Expert Podcast. We hope you've enjoyed the show. If you live in the St. Louis area and would like Dr. Candy's help to find a solution to your pain, Visit our website at stlpainexpert.com, email Dr. Candy at dave at stlpainexpert.com, or call Dr. Candy's clinical practice at 314-941-3970. If you're listening from outside the St. Louis area but would still like some help, feel free to contact us to learn more about our virtual health coaching. Regardless of where you live, please share our podcast with anyone you know who would benefit from learning more about pain and what can be done to relieve it. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Google, Spotify, or your other favorite podcast platform so you get notified when we release a new episode. Thanks again for listening, and we hope you'll enjoy us again soon.